Our first guest is a best-selling author, award-winning filmmaker, rapper, and professor. And his debut memoir, Buck, drew praise from Maya Angelou and made the Washington Post bestsellers list twice. And now he's given this story its very own hip-hop score. Here to talk about the original book soundtrack for Buck is rapper, renaissance man, M.K. Asante. Welcome to Arise 360. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Now, this book made a huge impression mm -hmm. on a number of very important people. I know Maya Angelou called it a story of surviving and thriving with passion, compassion, wit, and style. Wow. What's it like to have a Nobel laureate say that about you? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's surreal. It's an amazing feeling, you know. It was even more amazing because Dr. Angela was my mentor, yeah. you know, and she, um, we worked on a movie, we wrote a movie together called The Black Candle, yeah. and uh, she told me, she taught me so many things in life. She said, you know, if you get, give, when you learn, teach. Yeah. And so she was constantly teaching, constantly giving, and she's still giving and teaching me even now. What's the most um, valuable lesson you learned from her? The most valuable lesson, she quoted the poet Terence one time, and she said, you know, you're a human being, therefore nothing human is alien to you. Never fear anything, any environment, you belong there. And then she told me when I was writing Buck, I, I was having some issues and some difficulty with it. I said, you know, Dr. Angelo, I'm, I'm struggling with this. What's your advice? And she said, tell the truth. She said, when you tell the truth, it's going to connect with someone in Iowa, in India, in Accra, in Lagos, mm. in Harare, everywhere. It's going to connect with everyone. And so she told me to tell the truth. Mm. Wow. Well, she's featured in the book also. Why was it important for you to make sure her voice was heard in this book? And how did you get her to do it? Um, well, you know, like I said, we, our relationship goes back to a film that we wrote called The Black Candle, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, <clears throat> we've been working together ever since. And she's just been mentoring me. And and, uh, you know, I just, when I was working on the book um, and I was struggling with it, she was the first person I thought of to, mm -hmm. to seek advice from. Now, how did you link up with her in the first place? Because you read Buck, and we know that your trajectory wouldn't directly lead you to my Yeah, Angela. definitely. I mean, Buck ends when I'm 18. Mm -hmm. And so I met Dr. Angela way after that um, when I was in, in graduate school at UCLA working on uh, a movie called The Black Candle. Okay. And when I was thinking about this movie, I thought, who could I get to narrate this movie? And she was the, the only person that I had on my list. And so uh, I called the number that I thought was her agent's number. Okay. And the phone was ringing, 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 and then, hello, on the other line. And I was like, this is not her agent. And I started talking real fast. And, you know, um, that was my first time talking to her. And then she said, send me the proposal. And a couple weeks later, she called me. And we were I was in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, working on a movie with her. Wow, my that's goodness. a story you never hear of. Most people just would have froze, like, oh, my gosh, this is her. But, wow. Yeah, yeah, well, I did freeze. Oh, okay. <laughs> Out, all right. But I figured it out. All right. Well, she must have been so impressed with your story, too. Tell us a little bit about the story you tell in the book. Yeah, so Buck is my coming-of-age story. Mm -hmm. It's about the graceful survival against impossible circumstances, mm -hmm. you know? It's about my education, my miseducation, my re-education, my street education, my self-education. It's about the difference and the distance between school and education, it's, it's all of that. And, um, you know, it's about my family, it's about my community, it's about, you know, growing up in Philadelphia, I grew up in Philadelphia, uptown Philly, um, and just navigating, you know, through um, mental health issues with my mom, through my brother's incarceration. Mm -hmm. um, and your really, parents were from Zimbabwe. I was born in Zimbabwe, but my parents are actually from here. From here, Yeah, okay. my mom is from Brooklyn and my dad is from Georgia. Got you. And they moved to Zimbabwe um, actually to help in liberation struggle. Really? Um, yeah, in the, in the 80s. And so um, I was born in Zimbabwe in Harare, and uh, we moved back to America when I was about three. Mm -hmm. But so you I, still consider yourself African, though, even though you were raised here most of your life. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my connection with the continent is, is super strong. You know what I mean? I've been probably to about 20, 25 countries in Africa. Wow. And um, I feel like I'm, I'm an African. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, um, you know, I grew, grew up in America, and I always kind of felt as an African-American, and as really a true African-American, because I was born in Africa, mm -hmm. raised in America with American parents, I've always felt like I was the bridge between mm -hmm. the continent mm -hmm. and my brothers and sisters over here in America or in the diaspora, because a lot of times my friends growing up had misconceptions, you know, mm -hmm. of Africa, mm -hmm. right. and yeah. I felt like it was my job to kind of teach them. And at the same time, continental Africans that I know and met 
had misconceptions of my brothers and sisters over here in America, and I felt like it was my job to kind of, you know, bridge that gap. So we realized, like, yo, we're actually, you know what I mean? It's just, just misconceptions. You were the liaison between exactly. the two. You know that. what I mean? <laughs> now talk to us about a book soundtrack. We've heard of movie soundtracks, sure. movie scores, but a book soundtrack? Yeah, a how book soundtrack. How did that come to be? And yeah. how do you make something like that a reality? You know, um, it, I wanted I always, my whole thing is about doing things different and always doing things new and fresh and really like expanding the dialogue around books and things like that. And so I love books, I love literature, but I also love music. And so when I thought about Buck, it's already a rhythmic book and it already has a kind of a syncopation to it. I thought, man, this really needs music, you know? And I started to get into music um, as I was writing Buck. And um, I did a song with Talib Kweli that mm -hmm. was really successful. And I decided, you know what? I want to do a soundtrack for this book mm -hmm. because I want to translate this book into another language. You know how we do foreign mm -hmm. language translations? I want to translate it into the language of music, mm -hmm. which is universal. And I feel like by translating it into that language, I can reach people who might not even ordinarily read. And so really, for me, the soundtrack is, is kind of comes back to literacy, a way to kind of get people to read a book who might not necessarily read books and kind of say, oh, well, this is a, you know, they might hear the music and be like, oh, and then someone says, you know, like I was walking down the street uh, the other day, I was in Baltimore and I had this shirt on and a guy comes up to me and says, you know, that's a book, right? <laughs> and you're like, I, I, know. I say, yeah, so, I think I, I, think yeah, I heard of that I think one. I heard of that <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot more people are hearing about the book now. It's taught in over 100 schools and universities around mm -hmm. the country. Yeah. And hopefully they'll be able to get your album there too. But what do you want people to take away from not only the book, but the album? Um, I want them to take away a lot of things. One thing is if you make an observation, you have an obligation. That's mm -hmm. been my mantra, you know, um, transforming observations into obligations. And that can be artistically, socially, in your community. When we see things that are problems, you know, we got to become a part of the solution. So that's part of my message. My other part of my message, I think, is about finding your voice. Mm -hmm. Buck ultimately is about me finding my purpose in life, which is to be a writer, to be an artist, you know. And I want to share that with other people so that they can find their purpose, find their voice, and not be afraid, you know, to, to sing their song, mm -hmm. to tell your story, because a lot of times we feel like we, we our stories aren't important, mm -hmm. but our stories are so important and we need it. And so, you know, I want to inspire people to tell their story, because I know that even though Buck is my story, it's everybody's story, and, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what my Angela was saying. When you tell your story, it's not just your story anymore. It's universal. We all suffer from loneliness or depression or isolation or miseducation or re-education. Mm -hmm. We all go through these mm -hmm. things, right? And so when you tell your story, you're actually telling the story of a lot of different people. All right, so the book is out, the album's out. When can we see the movie? The movie's coming out. I got the Sundance uh, Film Fellowship to write the movie, wow. so I'm working on that right now. The movie will be out in 2016, probably. You can get the uh, soundtrack and the book at mkasante.com, uh, qualiclub.com. Uh, hey. It's, yeah. Got it all. Thank you so MK. much. MK. Thank I you. I like that. We're, <laughs> we're going to be seeing you a lot for yeah. years to come. Yeah, I look I've got forward a good to feeling it. about you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank MK. you for being here. Yeah. Come back when the movie comes out, all right? I definitely all will. Right, Appreciate you. it. Observation, we'll right obligation, right? I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Thanks. Wow. I am